So what we're doing today is some may consider a bit of an unorthodox modification. We'll be taking this Sun Sun UV sterilizer and plumbing it in line with the Fluval 407. Now this isn't as easy as simply attaching a new hose and putting it into the outlet into the tank because of Fluval's proprietary sized uh, corrugated tubing that they have here. Of course, none of the fittings fit into it, none of the standard fittings rather, and since it's this hard plastic, uh, you can't quite just clamp it onto something without it leaking. It also has the soft silicone uh, proprietary sized uh, attachments, which again are great in theory when you're just using it with the Fluval 407 itself, but doing any sort of splicing work like we'll be doing here today, it's going to require a little bit of extra work and extra fittings to get everything to kind of gel together. Now, of course, my original plan with this whole tank was to have a sump installed. However, the size of the cabinet for the tank just isn't large enough. Some people may say that it's in itself is unorthodox, that canister filters are just a reservoir for nitrates, and so far that hasn't been the case for me. My chemistry has come back just fine after about uh, two weeks worth of use, and the tank honestly has, has never looked as clear as it looks now. The water clarity is great, even you know within the first few days of using the Fluval 407, but two weeks out now, um, I'm really impressed with the water quality. The problem, however, is the uh, dinoflagellates, and I've been dealing with those for a couple months now, you know, dosing hydrogen peroxide, using a, a scooper to fa manually remove them, um, but they just keep coming back. So that's where the the Sun Sun UV sterilizer comes into play. I'm hoping that's going to be the final nail in the coffin here on these these dinoflagellates. So the Sun Sun UV sterilizer, I was you know I I looked at the stuff from Bulk Reef Supply and the Pentair models that are pushing you know two three four hundred dollars at that point. You can build a four hundred dollar UV sterilizer, but where's where's the money going into that? It's going is it going into the power supply? Is it going into the plastic housing? Which of course isn't the case, it's going in, into the bulb. So we'll see how the bulb works on um, this model here. This one came in at about $60 when I bought it. Um, and I think it's it's gonna be the perfect pairing of kind of the the Chinese manufacturing and access to you know cheap parts with the you know added benefit of still having good quality parts and I kind of think of it like a TCL TV and they make TCL makes great TVs and they put her out at a very reasonable price and it's all because of the higher end kind of Chinese market and of course who can uh, deny that when your product has many patents patents it's uh, got to be in kind of, you know, that higher league quality of, of UV sterilizer. So uh, we'll see how this goes. I'll probably do a little bit of an update video and see how much of an effect on the, the dinoflagellates that this has actually had. So the unit itself is pretty decently sized and rated for a full 18 watts. Um, but what I was most happy about is when I opened up the container, it had all of this mounting equipment and mounting brackets, as well as a flow control, um, kind of this clear inlet. Um, but the, the mounting brackets are what I was happiest about because I was anticipating having to either fabricate my own or you know 3D print something to get it mounted to the inside of the cabinet, which is what my um, kind of final plan is here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some work done, kind of uh, have you catch up with me halfway through. Right off the bat now we've had to make some unfortunate changes to our design just because the UV filter itself really is having a hard time even fitting in this cabinet uh, in the first place. So originally I had wanted to orient it vertically that way you know, the electrical stuff was all going to be above the flow of water and there wouldn't be any of this uh, you know, 
reservoir below the level of the pump, which is, we're going to see if that causes any issues. I do have some concerns about that, but I tried a couple different designs. I had some elbow um, you know, adapters in there to try to keep it vertical, but it just wasn't going to fit easily enough. So uh, right now we've got, <clears throat> I'll kind of walk you through what we're doing here. So we've got the five eighths inch uh, braided tubing going into the three quarter to half adapter, which attaches to the uh, kind of the telescoping uh, adapters that we have here. A lot of my headaches would be solved if I could actually just have a three quarter adapter built into this rather than this, you know, a Basically, that, that's the reason I can't fit anything in here is because this telescoping adapter takes up almost as much room as the, uh, the filter itself. So you kind of have to visualize that this is more of a square object rather than a, a, a oblong one. So what we'll do next is we'll run, uh, I think I'm going to be running some more of the 5 eighths braided out the back and then work on an adapter to get it back into the hose here. Now the braided cable or the braided Tubing is a must. I you know, had read online, people like, if you're working in this small space, you're going to need the braided cable, otherwise it's going to kink. And that's exactly what I discovered. So I had, uh, in, you know, earlier in the video there, you may have seen me with some clear tubing that kinked immediately and I had to go against the, uh, the, braided, the braided tubing here. And that is holding its shape great. Um, it's a really good idea to also kind of warm this up in the sink ahead of time. Makes it a lot more pliable, um, easier to kind of mold to the position that you want, and then it'll solidify again once the temperature goes down on it. The reason the fluval corrugated uh, tubing has to come back into play is even that braided tubing isn't going to be able to make this quick switch back here um, to get <clears throat> into the outflow back into the tank. So that's where this tubing here kind of excels. So what we'll be doing is we'll be making an adapter that will hopefully attach onto there just fine uh, and not have any leaks. I did put a different connector between those two. The threaded one just wasn't giving me as good of a seal as I wanted to, so we ended up going with a half to three quarter, and then I wrapped the three quarter with some of that uh, PTFE tape, just to give it a little bit of more of a soft on soft seal with the silicone edge, and things are looking great. Not a single drop here so far. So we've got everything attached, and we are ready for the leak test. Got our towel on hand here. Uh, the siphon actually still seems to be active due to the pressurized canister so water started flowing immediately without even me turning the pump on you know i'm just gonna let that kind of do its thing and we have our first leak so the viewing port was a question of mine that i had uh, when i was assembling it there's the gasket and then the window and then the cap that goes around it and i was a little concerned or questionable about the order of operations on that all right we've got our PTFE tape, and yep, we did have that backwards. We want that gasket on the innermost layer, um, not between the the window and the, the cap itself. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Things are looking pretty good. So we've, uh, we're currently running water. My concern, again, was that the Fluval 407, the pump wasn't gonna be strong enough to give adequate flow as, again, the water goes up and then against gravity and then into this larger reservoir and that has to be pumped up against gravity again at a point below its pump. But, uh, truth be told, I the flow that I want coming out of the outlet into the tank is at the power that I want it at right now and I'm actually only about, two-thirds to three-quarters of the way with the flow control open so uh, in all honesty I don't want any more power than what it's putting out right now even with this contraption in play I'm getting uh, more than adequate outflow there I'm gonna do a couple different changes to where that's located so it's not so disturbing but basically uh, things are looking really good here I initially thought that the bulb was a dud and then I'd have to take this all apart again, but it actually just takes a little bit of time to warm up. As you can see here, it's already getting more bright as we speak. 
uh, kind of an interesting color shade to it, but I'm assuming that it is just due to the uh, UV filters that are there that makes it look a little bit more of a like a blue UV rather than the purple one you may come to associate with that color spectrum. Another thing I should note is uh, there's no additional sound generation. There's no air pockets or bubbles that are trapped inside when you do like the normal siphon primer. Uh, it's silent. I'm really impressed with this. No, no vibrations from the tubes or anything like that. I'll be able to close my cabinet here and it'll be just about as silent as the Fluo 407 was by itself, which is a really quiet filter to begin with. Uh, it's actually far more quiet down here than it is from the actual outlet of the water up on top. About 12 hours have passed since I first started recording the video, and you can already see the propagation of the dinoflagellates down at the bottom here. Uh, normally, I would take a scooper and remove them and toss them, but we're going to do a little bit of an experiment here and see how much of an effect the UV filter has over a couple days on these ones that have kind of caked themselves onto the sand bed here. We also have, you can tell there's some bryopsis growing on the back. That's going to be the next plan of attack. I've got some flucanazole that I've ordered that's already here. Um, we're going to run the UV for about a week and then cut the UV and cut the carbon filters and then we're going to dose the medication and hopefully do kind of a one-two punch on this tank and get it looking as good as we can here today.